Hi everybody, welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray, I will be your host today and I have some really cool things to show you upstairs. Let's go upstairs and take a look at what's growing. Let's start this off in the quarantine corner. It's so sad. These babies are in the quarantine corner, but these are the three plants that I showed on the Praxis channel, bringing in plants for the winter. I sprayed them with pyrethrin. I gave them some neem in the soil to make sure the bugs were gone and I kept them in the garage for a couple days. Now they're upstairs in the grow room, but I never, ever, ever take unnecessary risks. Not when it comes to my grow room, uh-uh, no. I put these in a corner. I have a couple bulbs on a stand above them to give them a little bit of light. I'm gonna give them approximately two more days of quarantine and check them out with my handy dandy Mr. Peanut magnifier to make sure there are no bugs on top of the soil, no bugs on the plant. And when I am 100% certain that they are okay, they're gonna go join. Okay, our next stop is gonna be the cocoa tree. I showed you this before, but take a look at the progress that I have going on over here. What I've done is add some bamboo into the pot and I've spread the three growing tips from the cocoa and I'm growing them in three different directions, kind of splaying it out like a palm tree. And I've done the same over here with those and they're tied with string very loosely. See how that's done? And that way this plant won't grow any taller. It'll just grow out and store, uh, sort of, you know, fill in the top. It forks right there about maybe three and a half to four feet up. It's gonna be a beauty. It is an absolute amazing plant. It started to get a little bit too tall for this room and I don't wanna take it downstairs because I don't think the heat or humidity is gonna be good enough downstairs. But here's, now I, I, I gotta admit, I was going prune crazy that day and I took the top off of my avocado. And look what happens when you take the top off of an avocado. You get more avocado. You just can't stop these plants. Isn't it beautiful? Multiple growing tips. I don't know. It's about maybe six or eight of them. So yeah, this is good. I got six or eight growing tips on an avocado tree. Beautiful. And you know, the seed never did die. I just put it like buried halfway and it pushed itself out. And that's how it's been growing for quite a long time. I don't know how long this plant's been here, but that seed just keeps going and going and going. And of course, uh, the pineapple that started the whole pineapple fiasco all over YouTube. Yep. She is huge. She is monstrous. She is huge. There's all kinds of adjectives that'll describe her. And she's reaching out with her long things here. They are monstrous. About, I'd say, three and a half to four feet long now. Yeah, they are big. And I'm running out of room for her. But she's always going to be a fixture here in the girl room. Don't worry, I'm never getting rid of her. What is this plant back here? I have no idea. A couple feet away from Mama Pineapple is her child. This is the pineapple top that I got off the pineapple that I harvested from her. So we have a mother and a baby growing a couple feet apart. I thought that was kind of cute. Up here, right by the grow light, this is the black pearl pepper plant. I butchered this thing down. It was growing so amazingly beautiful and it got spider mites. Yes, I do get spider mites on my plants just like you do. And sometimes it's just not worth spraying. You just want to lop it all off, call it a day, spray the stems and hope for the best. And that's what I did. But look what happens with the stems. This is like what I did with the pepper plants outside on the Praxis channel. I chopped everything off and this is what happens. This was nothing but stems a couple weeks ago. And look at this. They do find a way to come back. I think it's great. This is nothing remarkable, but I wanted to show you. This is a Prax cherry, and it was taken from the best tomato of my Prax cherry growing outside. So this is sixth generation of Prax cherry. I'm trying to keep a seed from the best tomato of the strongest plant each year and grow it to make sure that the heirloom is as strong and viable as possible. So this is gonna be growing in the grow room all winter long and I'll be saving seeds from this and growing them next year. You know the routine, on and on and on it goes. Let's back this thing off. Back up, back up. Whoa, backing that up. Coffee tree. It's a little tiny coffee tree. Well, actually not really so tiny anymore, is it? 
This is a coffee tree that I'm growing inside. I grew it from seed and anybody that's grown a coffee bean, you know it takes forever to sprout. But boy, once they start growing, don't they grow? Yeah, and it, they split off naturally. I didn't prune this or do anything, but it's got multiple growing tips growing all over the place. I keep it about a couple feet from a 300 watt output uh, compact fluorescent bulb and it loves it. It absolutely loves it. So uh, apparently I'm doing something right with this. Uh, it drinks a lot of water. Up here it drinks a lot of water, so I have to water it almost every day. And it has a decent sized pot. So it's not that it has a, too small of a pot, it's just a very thirsty plant. And I do have a viewer that wanted me to show you this. This is a bay tree. Uh, he sent me bay seeds uh, back in the winter, I believe. You don't know the smell of bay until you've actually rubbed a fresh bay leaf and just stuck it up to your nose. It is like sunshine in a leaf. It is happiness in a plant, just like a tomato plant. Bay leaves just make me smile. Behind the bay leaves is a rose apple. A friend sent me rose apple seeds. Thank you. This is a rose apple plant. I don't know much about it other than it's growing. <laughs> Mr. Science. Okay, what is behind here? What is this thing? Oh, it's a lychee. L-Y-C-H-E-E. -E. I don't know what a lychee is, but that's a lychee right back there. I'm growing a lychee. And uh, right next to the lychee is the Asi. Oh boy, I, I always get a lot of comments on how to pronounce this and I keep forgetting. That's just how I am. I forget a lot. Whatever this palm is, it's an edible palm. You can eat the seeds and they're really delicious and they grow fast. I grew this from a seed and it's doing phenomenally well. I can't believe I'm growing a palm tree in Minnesota, but I am. Right next to the palm tree is the miracle fruit. The miracle fruit is doing extremely well. I've had quite a few people ask me, how's your miracle fruit? Well, I don't know what I'm doing right, but apparently pouring in a little bit of coffee every now and then keeps the soil just acidic enough to keep this little bugger happy because it does like acidic soil. And last winter I grew a huckleberry in the house and I took it outside. It didn't do so well. I'm going to grow another one. The last of my huckleberry seeds I planted and I have a little huckle sprout. I'm going to grow huckleberries in the house all winter long. They did extremely well inside last winter. So this is going to get extremely huge. I use the word extremely a lot, but it explains the plant <laughs> extremely well. <laughs> Shut up, Ray. And this poor thing had a really bad morning. I woke up, came upstairs with my coffee, and the first thing I noticed was a web. Bad plant. Bad plant. Yep, it had spider mites. Don't know where they came from. Uh, apparently it was out partying last night and brought home bugs. So I sprayed it really good. It's not feeling very well, but I really don't care. You bring in bad bugs, you get sprayed. Hiding behind it. This got a couple spider mites from it. This is, uh, what are you? What are you? Oh, turmeric. Yeah, somebody sent me a turmeric root. And uh, yeah, I'm growing turmeric, I guess. I don't know anything about turmeric other than that's it right there. I have an orange. Yeah, I don't really show it that often, but yeah, I have an orange tree back here in the corner. It's doing good. It's not growing like the lemon tree, but I don't care. Yeah, it's a little orange tree. I'm uh, pulling the branches down to kind of get it to bush out. I want an orange bush. I don't want an orange tree. I want an orange bush. And uh, it came from an orange that I got from the grocery store. So I have no idea what it's called. It says call it Mr. Generic Orange. And the Voodoo Garden Tour would not be complete without a really unexpected surprise. Take a look at this. This is a pomegranate. Yes, somebody sent me dwarf pomegranate seeds. Thank you so much. And I showed you on a previous episode that I had flowers everywhere. Well. I started pollinating these flowers and what I do is I stick my little bee finger and I go to another flower, take that pollen and I kept doing that and I really didn't expect to see much and I got a pomegranate there, I got a pomegranate right here and I got pomegranates all over the place. Now this is the dwarf pomegranate bush. I don't know if that means just the bush is dwarf or if the fruit is dwarf but I have them all over the place. I'm not going to move this plant because I don't want to disrupt it too much uh, because I don't well, you really got to watch out when you're carrying this thing. <laughs> one wrong move and I am one eye less than having two eyes. But 
I wanted to show you this. I do have the two pineapples upstairs. You saw those. This is the one I brought downstairs because there just was not room for this thing. Take a look. It is the biggest of the small pineapples and uh, it's doing extremely well. And I know it's ridiculous. I have not transplanted this thing yet. It just seems to be so happy. So I didn't transplant it. I'm just going to let it go for a little while and eventually I'm going to put it in a bigger pot. The reason I didn't transplant it is because I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen when I transplant this. It's going to get even bigger and I'm running out of room for all these pineapples and the only option I have is to throw one or two of them away and I, I don't want to do that. I can't do that to my babies. So in a small pot it stays so that it doesn't get too overgrown and I brought it downstairs and I leave it on the dining room table so it gets uh, southern winter light. It's going to really like that. And, and, oh, yeah, you're a heavy little one, aren't you? This, what a beauty, huh? This is my Christmas cactus. I've shown this a couple times and I wanted to show, oh, <laughs> I want to put it on my knee because it's a little heavy. I wanted to show you again because it is doing really, really well. Uh, I don't do anything special with this thing. All I do is I give it uh, the organic fertilizer that I use for everything else inside, upstairs, downstairs, and it seems to be good. I don't give it any special light. I don't give it any special care. I haven't done anything with this thing except water it and look at it and smile every now and then. So I guess a smile every now and then keeps this thing happy. Oh. And down it goes. <sighs> I think I'm done. I think I'm really done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, this got a little out of hand. As with everything in my life, it tends to get a little out of hand. And um, I'm trying to show you this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do this without dropping everything on the floor. Don't fall on the floor. These are all of the letters I've received so far for the 52 drawings in 52 weeks. And I do appreciate everybody sending me their letters. Thank you so much. I haven't opened any of them except for the ones that seemed like they had either a live plant, live seed, live puppy dog, something that needed to come out of there. I, I opened it. But otherwise, your letter is 100% unopened. If you haven't sent me your entry, please send it now. Send it to the address right above my head right here and it's not too late. You can send it any time during this next year and what you want to do is you want to take a piece of paper, put your mailing address in the format that I have to put it on the envelope. Don't just write it in a long line because I don't know with foreign countries how it's supposed to go. So put it in clear print on the bottom of the letter, your mailing address with your name and then also put the prize that you want, okay? Because you have a selection of prizes. For American contestants, you either get a pound and a half brick of cocoa peat coir. That's the stuff that you put in water and it makes all this great soil. You get either that or you get a huge hand of those jalokia peppers, a big handful of the jalokia peppers I grew organically outside in a pot. I showed them in a picture on my Facebook. It was one plant that put out so many peppers that I had to spread it out and take this huge picture of. People on my Facebook have seen that. It blew my mind. It blew my mind and a lot of other people's mind how many peppers one plant could actually do. And so I have set a record, I believe, for the amount of peppers on one plant of anybody that I know. I sure as heck haven't done that before. But you get a handful of those dried peppers and the seeds may or may not sprout, but you can crush it up, put it in your food, put it in somebody else's food. Whatever you want to do with these peppers, it's totally up to you. I don't need to know about it if you're going to do something bad. You either get those sent postage paid or you get the brick of cocoa peat. Now, if you're an international person, this is open to the whole world. If you're an international person like from Canada, Britain, Australia, Istanbul, I don't care where you're from, send me a letter from there and I will send a selection of exotic strange tomato seeds. And I'm not going to be stingy either. I'm going to throw in a few envelopes of seeds. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I can guarantee you they're going to be great. I'm going to throw those in an envelope and I'm going to mail them to you postage paid. My gift to you, 52 gifts in 52 weeks. So send me your letter to the address listed above and we will get started on the drawings next week. And Last thing, I'm going to count up all of those comments on the free worm bin video. I'm closing off the comments now, so I'm going to count all those up. I got over 60,000 comments. I don't know what I was thinking, but apparently I wasn't. And uh, so I'm going to spend a few days nestled with my computer and counting up comments. It's going to suck, but I will come up with a winner by next episode here on the Voodoo Garden Channel, so stay tuned. Oh, gosh. <laughs>
<laughs> Sometimes I just talk so fast that I start hyperventilating. I've got to calm down, relax, and um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Thank you for joining me, everybody, here on the Voodoo Garden channel. My name is Ray. I am so... Uh, <laughs> I, got, I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay, everybody. I think I caught my breath. Thanks for joining me here on the Voodoo Garden channel. It's been a pleasure. It's been great. Thanks for joining me in my grow room. Everybody, I'm out of here. Have a great